All right, let's look at this last one. And it has some similar things to number two, but they've made it a little more difficult. So let's see if we can attack this one. So again, you have a function defined as an integral, but there's this extra little piece to it. So for f of seven, I would do f of seven is equal to three times seven plus the integral from zero to seven of g of t. So I'm kind of showing my work. This again is the graph of g. So that would be what? 21 plus, now from zero to seven, we know that we can, I don't have to write this necessarily, but I can break the integral up from zero to six and then six to seven. So the integral from zero to six is gonna be a semicircle with a radius. Oh, hey, there's my phone. Um, and so zero to six would be a semicircle of radius three. So that would be nine pi over two. Now notice that that is negative. So I'm actually gonna change that to a minus because it's below the x-axis. So I have negative nine pi over two. So that would be the integral from zero to six. And then from six to seven, I would basically have the area under that curve, which I can just count boxes, which is three. So I could simplify that, but why bother? You get one point just for getting that, so I would leave it just like that. For letter, uh, but for the second part of that, f prime of seven, so we know that f prime of seven, I'm trying to figure that out. I know that f prime of x would be equal to what? Well, the derivative of three x is three, and then plus the derivative of a function defined as an integral is replace, so that would be g of x times the derivative of the upper bound, which would be one, and the low, since the lower bound is constant, I can forget the minus part. So that's what I have for the derivative. Thus, f of seven then would be f of, or excuse me, f prime of seven would be three plus g of seven, and that would be three plus g of seven is three. So I get that f of seven is equal to, I keep saying f of seven, f prime of seven for heaven's sakes, Ms. Pruitt, is equal to six. And again, that was worth one point. So that's what we have so far. Okay, letter B, I'll just do letter B right here. Letter B is kind of a, a stinky one. Um, and there's there's two ways that I, I'm gonna go about it. Okay, find the x value on the closed interval negative four to three at which f attains its maximum value. So in other words, find the absolute max. Now, if you watch the video from, from the previous problem, you're like, oh, she said to write absolute max occurs at endpoint or when uh, f, uh, I guess g f prime would change from positive to negative. The problem is with this one, that's, that's not, it's not that it's a true, not true statement, that is true. But do you see that this graph normally, when this isn't here, we say that g is equal to f prime. So I can see where f prime is changing positive to negative very easily from the graph. I can see that with my eyes. However, on this problem, because that extra stuff is there, I can't say that. So I'm going to say absolute max is at endpoint or when it's still true that f prime, I'm, I'm finding the max of f, so f prime, it happened at critical point, when f prime is equal to zero or undefined, right? That's still a true statement. So my candidates, I mean, of course I have the endpoints, but let's see what points I have in between there. Where would this be true? Well, if f prime, and that's why I wanted to leave letter A there, if f prime is equal to three plus g of x, well, g of x is never undefined. I mean, you have closed dots everywhere. So f prime is never gonna be undefined. So f prime, where is that gonna be equal to zero? So three plus g of x is equal to zero when g of x is equal to negative three, 
I can say therefore, therefore at x equals uh, three. Okay, so I end up having a couple of candidates, uh, which actually not very many because my endpoints were negative three, negative four, and three. So x and f of x, negative four and three. And then I can find my values. Now my values, I kind of have to go back to this statement, how I got f of, unfortunately I haven't done this one. So I have to think about it though. Um, f of negative four, I would do three times negative four, which is negative 12. And then plus the integral, I'll, I'll write this out so you're not confused, zero to negative four of g of t dt. Now this is above the x-axis. I can find the uh, area of that triangle, which happens to be four. But notice because my bounds are flipped, it would actually be a negative four. So just for the sake of space, that's where I got that. Um, so this would be minus four, so I have negative 16. If I found f of three, that would be three times three, which is nine. And then, well, that's just half the circle, wouldn't it? So wouldn't that be nine pi over four? We said that semicircle from zero to six was nine pi over two, so it's just half of that. And I don't have to necessarily get that value, but you do have a calculator handy. So you might just type that in. I don't even have to write down the number. I'm just gonna put, I know it's, if I typed it in, I can see that it's greater than zero. So what did the question ask? Find the value of X. So F attains its absolute max on the interval from negative four to three at x equals three. Now, personally, I would do that. I, that's what I would do. Um, you get one point for kind of making this consideration right here. And then you get one point for, for answering the question with the correct justification. So that this is, I did it this way with candidates test. But here's what I want to do. Now, don't let this confuse you. I just, this is super important uh, on the AP test. We've done a problem where you, you're setting up candidates test, but these values are extremely hard to find or they don't give you enough information to find that. So what happens when you're like, I'm supposed to be doing candidates test, yet I, I can't do it, I can't find that. So I'm gonna do this one kind of a, a separate way. Instead of doing the candidates test or instead of figuring that out, Notice I could say this right here, okay? I could, just remember, if you can justify with words and reason it out, that's fine. You just have to use those relationships from uh, curve sketching. So what I mean is someone could say, wait a minute, if I looked at, I'm gonna erase all this in fact, If someone realized since g of x is greater than or equal to negative three of, on all these x values, then f prime, see notice here, if this value is greater than or equal to negative three, wouldn't it be true that f prime would be greater than or equal to zero on negative four to three? Thus, f is increasing. from negative four to three. So if you have, I mean, think about that. If you have an increasing function always, the only possibilities are these two. And of course, f of negative four is gonna be less than f of three. So absolute max on negative four to three occurs at x equals three. So sometimes, you can justify with words faster, um, and you might like that. Sometimes you have to use words because you're not able to find those Y values. They didn't give you enough information, 
or whatever. You can reason out throwing out things and justifying with these rules. But notice in my wording, I did a lot about, oop, didn't mean to erase there, did a lot of uh, intervals. So if you're talking F is increasing here and here, make sure you're using the domain and talk about where it's increasing and decreasing and all that kind of thing. So that's that guy. All right, let's do letter C. Boop, erase. Letter C says what? Letter C says, for each of those limits, find the value or state that it does not exist. So it's asking me two things. The limit as x goes to zero of g prime, and then the limit as x goes to zero from the right. So basically, Basically, it's saying if I were to draw a graph of g prime, and I looked at that graph, if I could I find those things? So isn't this, let's, let's pick apart what this is saying. Isn't this really saying the, the derivative uh, uh, from the left? I mean, isn't that what that means? Like, okay, so if, if I had the g prime graph, the limit as x goes to zero from the left is saying the left-hand derivative of g. So looking at this guy, do you see that the tangents, if I ask you the tangent as I approach zero, what is the slope of that line? What is the slope of the tangent line? Well, you can look at the graph and say, well, by rise over run, I get negative one half. And that's all you have to do. Whereas if I approach from the right, see how my tangent lines are getting vertical? As I get close to zero, like my tangent lines here and here and here and here, and as I get close to zero, they're like so, 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 so steep. So what's happening, what's happening to that slope is that it does not exist. And you go, well, can I put equals infinity? Because the slope is becoming vertical, it's very, very high. Use the wording from the problem. And remember, a limit of infinity means that limit does not exist. So this does not exist. And again, I don't like to say equals does not exist. I just like to say it does not exist. And those were each worth a point. No, you don't really have to justify that. That's something you can look at from the graph and give that answer. All right, letter D. Well, I'm gonna erase letter C because I might have to write a lot. Boop. All right, letter D. What are they? Find the limit and I have a fraction. Now, friends, I'm not saying 100%, so don't, don't quote me on this, but I would be very careful. If, if I had a fractional limit on, on your AP exam, I would, real, I would bet that it was a L'Hopital's question. Not guaranteed, but I would certainly be careful of it. So let's look. Let's see if, those, if this is going to be a L'Hopital question. The first thing you're going to do is direct sub. Notice I do not write this word limit. So I'm, I'm just going to do direct sub. I'm not going to put e limit equals anything. I'm just going to kind of write it out because I want to see. I want to know what f of negative 2 plus 7 is. Let, let's, just, let's just see what that is. Well, what is f of negative 2? Well, i got to figure that out like I figured out f of 7 and all that other stuff. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then I would have to find the integral from 0 to negative 2. So that's an area of 1, but same kind of thing. I would have, nope, I was doing the adding in my head. Um, that would be negative 1 plus 7. Oh, interesting, I get 0. Hmm, okay. And then the bottom... I can tell that in my head. If I put in negative 2, I can see that I get 0 over 0. So I'm like, okay, I get 0 over 0. Do I have to show that? No. I'd stop writing that. Because once I realize it's 0 over 0, I have to write it very specifically. I'm going to say since the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x plus 7 is equal to 0. And I've shown how I got that. Um... I've, I've shown how I've, I've gotten that. And the limit 
as x approaches negative 2 of e to the 3x plus 6 minus 1 equals 0. That's something you can do in your head, so you don't have to necessarily show that. So since those limits both equal 0, by L'Hopital's, and if you put L hop, they would actually give you credit. So by L'Hopital's, here's where I would copy the original problem. The limit of this fraction is going to be equal to what? What does L'Hopital's say? Okay, remember that day I sang? So you take the rate of change of the top and of the bottom. There's no need to rearrange. All you have to do is compare them. Okay, stop. So you get that. Now what happens when you take that limit? Well, plug in negative 2. F prime, now let me go back. Remember in part, I guess, A, we had that F prime was equal to 3 plus G of X, if you recall. So F prime of negative 2 would be 3 plus G of negative 2 and g of negative 2 is 1. You with me on that? So that would be 4. And then if I plug in negative 2 here, that gives me 1, and I get 3, and so I get that. Very specific how you do L'Hopital's. Um, you get a point for, let's see, where are my points at? Oh, you have to make this statement, so this is kind of worth a point, this statement. Uh, by applying L'Hopital's is a statement, and then getting the answer is a statement. But if you don't have the words limits, okay, that's a problem. If you don't, if you don't use the word limit in your problem, you don't get any points, whether you get the right answer or not. Um, so you got to make sure you you do it that way. QL, awesome.